Hey everyone, James here again. First of all, sorry for this sort of meh, 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 meh noise uh, that's going on. I've had epic man flu for a bit. Um, however, I have wanted to make this video. Um, I've got a whole bunch of images that I need to edit from a gig that I was at recently. Um, so I thought, why not do a little walkthrough of my Lightroom workflow? Sounds good? Let's do it. So the pics that we're going to be looking at was from a gig that I shot um, actually about a week ago now. Um, it was Cancer Bats, they were playing at the Crawford Arms in Milton Keynes. Awesome venue, um, even more awesome band. Um, I've had the pleasure of seeing them quite a few times, I think that's my seventh time I've seen them now. Awesome band, if you don't know who they are, check them out. Um, they were supported that evening by a band called Underside and a band called Bleed From Within. Underside, a Nepalese metal band. Who knew? I took a whole bunch of photos, as you do. Um, I don't know how many yet. We're about to find out when I import them in. It's normally quite a lot. I am quite guilty of... Uh, especially now I've got this beast. I tend to end up with a lot of photographs, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, and when I first started doing it, I found it really overwhelming. I got home and I had like about, like about a thousand pictures and I was like, oh, how am I gonna start whittling through these? It's gonna take me all day. So here's some ways that I've managed to improve my workflow to help me turn these pictures around soon as. Let's start by, um, I normally like to categorize my Lightroom folder a little bit. Uh, you can categorize it however suits you best. Um, now over the years, I've actually had different ideas of how I like to do it. Um, first of all, I like to have a catalogue per kind of year, actually. Um, don't really need to. They can hold quite a lot of files, but that's just the way that I work. So I like to have a, a catalogue per year. I like to break them down by logical collections, smart collections, whatever. So, so far for this year, we've got a, uh, in my band's uh, smart collection. If I were to create, I haven't shot uh, Cancer Bats yet in here, so I'm going to create a new collection set. And I'm going to call them Cancer Bats in the bands. And then I'm going to create a collection. And I tend to name it from the date the gig was and then where it was. So this is 2019, it was February, and it was, it was the 8th. I've just had to look that up because I can't remember what the date was. And this was uh, the Crawford Arms. Milton Keynes. Cool, I have my empty collection ready to import my photos. So I actually grabbed these files straight off my card when I got home. Um, I always like to do that just in case anything happens to it in the meantime. So I chucked them on my NAS when I got home. So I'm actually going to be importing them from my NAS rather than from my card. You need to find the, your photos that you took. So here they are. Um, now I know I took, I could say, quite a significant amount of photos of the band um, Underside. Let's untick all photos and I'll select the ones that I want. I'll grab all of these. Cool. So I'm going to import all these Cunspats images. Um, I don't want to be uh, teaching anybody to how to, to suck eggs if you already know everything that's going on. But there may be people watching that aren't really sure. So if any of these things help you out, that's cool. If you already know them, meh, gloss over them. It's cool. Um, so I won't ask them to build smart previews. I'll manage that myself in a bit. Don't import anything that is a duplicate, blah, blah, blah. I've got my own renaming system that I have so that they end up unique by date and stuff. Uh, so I want to import them into my 2019 folder that I got set up myself. All I want to do in here now is just make sure that when they come in, I add them to that new uh, collection that we made, the Cantabats one, and I'm going to set that off. So that's going to copy all those files over from my NAS to uh, my laptop. Um, and I'm then going to be ready to start working, editing, and I'll show you how I managed to start filtering through these images. Okay, they're in. Um, so now my next step that I tend to do is I want to be rattling through these, so I want to build some previews so that every time I flick from photo to photo, I haven't got that lag where it's trying to render what's going on. So I select all the images, I'll go up to uh, library, 
I go down to previews and I'll say, uh, let's build standard size previews. You can already tell there's some bad ones here, but you know, there's always gonna be bad ones, especially when I'm the, I'm the one taking the photos. Cool, our previews have now been built. Um, we are finally ready to do some editing. So that was the boring bit, the importing bit, the rendering bit. I hope you had a nice cup of coffee or whatever whilst you're waiting. So this is where I start. Um, I just do start to end, and I use stars for my rating. Um, so I obviously start with a one star rating. Now one star means it's fine. It doesn't mean anything more than that. It just means that it's kind of in focus and it's vaguely interesting looking and that's it. That's all I'm looking for at this stage. So anything where I've missed the focus a bit or uh, I was bursting a load and I've moved at the end and I had a few ones at the end that were towered off, they can all be gone. So at this stage I use rejected and I use one star. So to set a rating on a image, uh, you can just click the numbers one to five, that will give it the corresponding star value. And X is the button for rejecting an image and you can unreject it, with, well, unflag it totally with the U key. Um, so what I tend to do is I set up um, a filter to get going and I say, I only want to see um, unflagged photos. So I've got 286 photos to go through, which isn't actually too bad for me. I normally have uh, a few more than that. I had about 800 from Frank Carter and the Rout Snakes uh, last night, night before last. So all I'm doing is I'm looking through some images. So this was some practice shots that they were sound checking or whatever. Uh, so just a few shots just to get my eye in. Uh, these aren't great and they would never get used, but for the sake of argument, I'll say that, yeah, that's a one. Okay, we're in. And, and another little tip, if you press caps lock button, um, then every time you assign a star, it will jump across to the next image. So you, all you've got to do is just go through and go, yeah, one, one, that's fine. That one's clearly no good, so I'm gonna X. Now, because I set that filter up, I hit X, and it jumps out of the view. So um, I'm now working with whatever's left after the filter has been applied. And you can see down here now, I've only shown 285 of my 286 photos. This one's clearly rubbish. That one could be good, I'll give it a one. Um, that one could be good, so I might be able to pull some info out of that one. That looks pretty good, give that a one, one. And this is all I'm going to do. I just go through end to end and I'm either gonna give things one star, because I think they're good, and uh, an X if they're bad. A few moments later. Sweet, that's all done. So, we've managed to go through the whole lot. Like I say, at this stage now, all we've done is you've whittled it down to what we think is an all right photograph, and what was just rubbish and needs deleting. I've actually gone along and some of them aren't, that isn't strictly true. So if there's been a big burst of photos and they're all kind of good, um, I've just picked out the best ones from that little sequence and then discarded some of the others because who needs 30 photographs or whatever, all exactly the same. Um, so let's move on to the next step, shall we? I bet you can guess what it is. After one star comes two stars. Let's have a look at our collection again on here. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the grid view. Um, we managed to get that down to 88 from 286 photos. Not a bad first little sweep. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to go through and I'm going to rate everything uh, two stars. Well, not everything. Things that are worthy of being rated two stars will get rated two stars. Now, two stars at this stage means that, like, one just means I'll keep it on file. Everything that's been rejected, as far as I'm concerned, is deleted. I don't actually delete them unless I need some space later on down the road. It's always good to have them. They're just marked as rejected and you can filter those out with the, uh, with the flag so you can bring them all back if you ever need to. So now I'm looking to get these narrowed down a little bit further. And typically what I'm looking for at this stage is this is... This isn't like the ones that I'm gonna be using. These are just ones that are just a little bit better than all right. Um, so I'm starting to look at comparing photos, especially in this instance of um, a band. Uh, so for a music photography, I wanna make sure that I'm comparing photos of the bass player to see, have I got a good photo of the bass player? Have I got too many photos of the bass player? 
Um, have I got good coverage of the drummer and things like that? Um, so that's typically what I'm going through at this stage. So again, these shots at the beginning, these were just as they were kind of getting ready. They're nothing particularly great. I don't think I'll end up ever using those for anything. Um, that one could be good. I'm going to give that a two star. So at this stage, I'm looking like, is that one better than that one? I like the angle of that. That was a bit weird, but we'll have, we'll have the angle of that. Um, and I'm thinking like, I like in the lighting here. So that could be a two star. Um, and that, that could potentially be a two star as well. So some of these here, I'm not particularly blown away with some of these. Um, a lot of passion in that. This is where you might start actually coming in um, one to one and actually having a look around the image and thinking like, did I, did I nail that focus? Did I miss it a bit? Um, all of these are are similar, so I'm just going to pick the one that I like the look of. Sometimes, especially again at music photography, you get different lights and stuff as, the, as if it's strobing or you get different effects. So each individual frame, if you're bursting, you can have a totally different looking image. So you get quite a lot of choice there, which is quite nice. I'll pick one of those. And so this continues basically until you've whittled your images down to your favorite few. So I'm just gonna whiz through all of these, pick out the ones that I think are worthy of going to the next step. Um, and then uh, we'll see what we got at the end of that, shall we? I was quite fortunate here. There's quite a lot of nice shots to choose from. It makes this process pretty difficult. Some awesome lens flares going on with these photos here. Very lucky indeed. So I've, I've picked out a few of them. Okay, I've gone through and really narrowed this down now. So let's apply another filter. So if I go back to the grid view by pressing G, I can now apply a secondary filter. So show me everything that's rated uh, greater than or equal to two stars. Okay, that's chopped it down again to 24. Now typically from a gig, I'm looking to get about 10 to 15 images, um, of which I'll probably put like, I don't know, three or so on Instagram, 10 to 15 on Facebook, so you know, just chuck them in a, in a photo album on there on the page. Um, and you know, if they're actually shooting for a client, whether it be the band or if it's for the venue, then like I say, about 10 to 15, is a good number to go for, unless you've been told otherwise. Um, so what I tend to aim for, never had anybody complain about that. So I need to whittle this down again, but that's cool because I can see that I've still got a couple here from the same bank, a couple here from the same bank. So I'm just now gonna go through and really pick um, my favorite. And I still haven't done any editing yet. Um, you don't want to be doing any editing too fast or you don't want to be tweaking things as you're going through because every time you do that, all those uh, previews that you rendered at the beginning, they'll all need to get re-rendered. It will slow you down. Sometimes you need to do a bit of tweaking to help you decide or to see if there was an image that looked like it would have been quite good, but the exposure is just not right or something, you might want to tweak with the exposure values just quickly, just to see, can you pull that image back from the raw file? Is it gone forever? That may form uh, the basis of the decision as to whether you, you, you pick it or not. I try to leave the editing until I've reached kind of star level three. So star level three, this is now what I would consider to be. I would, star level two is, if somebody saw them, that's fine. Uh, star level three means they're kind of at delivery level. Uh, that's what I would be showing to the client. So let's do another whiz through these. Let's, let's start, um, start at the beginning, shall we? That's probably easiest. So again, here I can see I've got, I've got uh, options. So I think out of these three, the lighting of this one's my favorite, but you can see his face a little bit better on that one. I think I'm gonna go with, in fact, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna mark all three of those as three, because they're all great, and I'll pick which one to actually 
jot down again later once I've edited them. I think I've got a better photo of him. That's an interesting photo. I like the frame of that one. That looks a bit bingo-y. You can see a lot of people's heads. I might go for that one. And then here we've got... I need to pick the best out of these four, really. I'm loving the beads of sweat coming off his head on this one. That one's really good as well with the flares. I think the sharpest of the four images is the last one by far. So we'll go with that. The lights on that one, definitely. The lights above his head. Do you see what I mean about how just the same photo, but a, a split second later, you can get a totally different feel. So if I have a look at this now, what have we got? We've got this filtered to uh, showing everything that's above a three. 12. Okay, I think that's a good number to be working with. So now we've got our 12 photos shortlisted down to level three. This is kind of what I'd be considered as like my delivery. We've got um, a couple of the singer, we've got a couple of the guitarists. Um, we haven't got one of the drummer though. So we should go back and make sure we've included one of the drummer, especially if the drummer was a beast. Um, Mike, the normal drummer, he uh, wasn't on tour with the guys this time around because he's just had a baby. So we had a stand-in drummer from Belgium, I think he was. Didn't miss a note. Top work, top work. I like this photo. He's not actually playing the drums, which was unfortunate, but it works for me. So now we get into what many people think is the best bit. We've got our 12 images, we've written it down, and it's, I find it quite therapeutic. Go and get yourself a nice coffee or a beer, or depends on what time of day it is. Um, just sit back, chill, put some music on, whisk through all your pictures, put them down. It's, it's not, it doesn't take too long. That's my workflow anyway. So whilst we're here, you might as well have a look at doing a, a, a quick edit on a couple of these. I've started making, uh, well I've always had like presets, but I've started actually getting some presets together. Um, and my, the one that seems to be working for me a lot, and I'm looking forward to trying it out and say this one here, uh, is this preset here. It pushes a lot of green into the shadows. Um, it warms up the highlights. I like the look. I spent a while kind of using it as a, like a portrait style. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's looking good. Um, yeah, little teaser there for you the, at the end. Um, so if you want to see how these end up, check out my Instagram um, or find me on Facebook and all that kind of jazz and you'll be able to see the finished version of these 12 images. If that was helpful for you, give the video a little like down below. That would be superb if you could. Um, even better than that, if you know a better way of doing this, because I'm sure this isn't the best way, it's just my way. Um, let me know. Drop a little comment down below. Let me know your workflow. I'd love to hear from you. I'm sure there's wedding photographers out there that are dealing with thousands upon thousands of images after a day's shooting. Um, how do you go through it? How do you manage it? Um, this isn't the same scale as that. However, um, it is quite fast turnaround. Like I said, I'm trying to normally look to do it the next day or at most the day after that. Um, in this instance, I've mucked up overnight because this was about a week ago, but I wanted to make a video about this and I've been ill, so whatever. Anyway guys, that's it from me. Um, pretty informal little video. Hopefully it was helpful. Like I say, give it a like down below if it was. Subscribe if you want to see more videos about photography and video editing and that kind of malarkey. And until the next time, peace.